Whiskey 4, Delta Mike Lima. Uh, Whiskey 4 station, uh, come back slowly, phonetically, with your call sign. Whiskey 4, Delta Mike Lima. Whiskey 4, Delta Mike Lima, Roger, uh, what's the name there? His name here is Doug, located in Franklin, Tennessee, and I was scanning the dial and I heard you talk to another gentleman. I'm, and I'm running a Swan SW240 that I just uh, finished uh, first of the week, uh, you know, getting it. it I don't know, it's going to be, somebody's going to throw it in the trash, and so I've got it back and revived it. Oh, well, gosh, you're looking good. You're dead on frequency. Sounds like you're dead on the frequency, Roger. I don't know what the frequency is we're on, but, I, you know, I, I, I can tune it to where you're dead on. What frequency are we on? Uh, 71.88. Uh, uh, zero, 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 zero. 7188, Roger. Well, you know what? That's pretty close to this old uh, graduated dial. Looks like it might be. So that's pretty amazing right there. I heard you talking about Elvis, and I've got an Elvis story that I saw Elvis perform a couple of times in uh, my life. And uh, well, my, daughter, my daughter was born at around, little later, around 3 o'clock, August the 16th, 1977. It's about right at the time Elvis died. Roger, Roger. Uh, well, uh, gosh, uh, you know, is there more to that story? Uh, but sorry, but repeat that. Uh, you must have hit your VFO. You just uh, changed frequency there just a little bit. Uh, come back. I'll give you a little uh, audio there to uh, check out your tuning. And, uh, yeah, I was just curious if you had more to your Elvis story. But uh, that's, uh, that's great. She was born uh, uh, on uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, death time, or, or what was that? Yeah, August the 16th, 1977, and it was around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Roger, now you're a little bit high on frequency. <laughs> I, but, uh, you know, uh, you might get a freak meter uh, for that uh, radio. It's just uh, be able to plop it right on frequency, Roger. I've got one. It's a, what, a DD-103 universal digital frequency meter. I could hook that to it. You know, normally, it, after I leave it on all day, it doesn't drift. But it's a swan, so it drifts <laughs> no matter what. Roger, Roger. Now, uh, you know, uh, some of the... Uh, uh, antenna analyzers uh, run uh, freak counters in there too. If you have a, a antenna analyzer, uh, I've got a uh, several of them. I've, I've got more test equipment. I know what to do with. I'm a I, I'm a sucker for vintage radios and and uh, vintage test equipment and new test equipment. But I do own a newer radio. I have an Elecraft K3, and uh, I wouldn't take anything for it. But I've got Collins, Swan, Drake, all everything that I've was dead when I got it and I restored it and that's I enjoy that uh, most of the time. Roger, Roger. Uh, what's the name there? Name here is Doug, Delta Oscar Uniform Golf. Now Doug, I had that but I tell you I wrote it so fast uh, I can't, can't read it. And uh, where, where are you located? Uh, Franklin, Tennessee, just south of Nashville. Uh, about I'm about uh, what about less than five miles from the WSM 650 radio tower? About how many miles from there? Probably five. Do you uh, get any uh, any uh, utensils uh, oscillating there because of their signal? Uh, I, I I joke about it when I'm working on some things. You know, it's uh, uh, you can you can almost hold a tin can up here and hear WSM. Yes, sir. Number one, their frequency uh, six uh, six fifty, and really good for radiating. And then fifty kW, man, it just uh, oh gosh, it just goes. Uh, particularly at night, uh, around the world, two or three times, you know. Yeah, I've made several uh, filters uh, uh, to. Uh I call them my WSM filters. So some of our our areas group, we like to do portable ops, and if we're working in certain areas, we have to use one of my filters to keep WSM out of everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's it's great that uh, I think that uh, clear channel radio still exists. Now, you know, they don't have quite as clear a channel as they used to because the problem was all the clear channels were running uh, one or two networks at night. And, uh, you know, the FCC said, well, gosh, we don't need clear channels because they're all running the same thing. So they almost shot themselves in the foot. Uh, Roger? Yeah, I understand. And I gathered from the previous QSO you were having that you were in the broadcast 
uh, industry. Roger, spent uh, 50 years in uh, commercial broadcast, uh, AM, all AM stations, never never FM, all AM. I just love uh, AM transmitters, uh, particularly commercial uh, AM transmitters uh, because of the quieting. You know, they're, they're running, a, you know, a 5,000 watt station runs 5,000 watt carrier and it's just so quiet. Whereas, uh, you know, uh, ham AM radios uh, run at reduced RF levels, uh, resting RF levels like 250 watts or 300 watts and then modulate to uh, 1500 or, or whatever it is, but they don't have the quieting that uh, commercial AM radios do, Roger. Uh, QSL, KC9, VKV, W4DML. I enjoy AM, and I've, I've got some Johnson, uh, oh, it's not, it's an underpowered Johnson Viking Ranger, and I've got an old Lysco AM, and some other, well, the Drakes will do AM, but uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy AM, and uh, don't do it as much as I like, but the sound quality is just so good. Oh, that's that's Roger there. Just uh, AM is just uh, you know uh, very nice. It provided it's set up correctly. You can you can incorrectly set up any transmitter if you if you if you do, Roger. Yeah, there's a gentleman I work not too far from where I am now, and he he mainly does AM, and I'm I'm so jealous of him because he has. Uh, his uh, Collins transmitter is the Collins transmitter that was at the uh, AM station in my hometown growing up. So I spent time at the radio station around that transmitter, and now it's been, re been repurposed uh, for working 80 meters, and I, I would love to have that. We were at WEKR, -E and it was one of the 1240 stations. Turned down to, you know, like a 100-watt light bulb at night, I think, if I remember right. Oh, Roger, yes. Uh, the, uh, about the third station I worked at uh, as a kid, uh, I was uh, 22 years old, uh, WJNO in West Palm Beach. Uh, uh, their standby transmitter was an old Western Electric um, low-level modulation. And it was always, uh, the engineer always had a bear of a time getting it tuned properly. And uh, usually was somewhat successful, but as I was driving to work, I could always tell when they were on the Western Electric because of the, the uh, slight distortions. Roger? Uh, QSL, yeah, the WSM station here, I've been been in it a couple of times. You know, they've still got the original, uh, I can't remember the name, it starts Blau, Blau something design antenna, sits on a big old uh, uh, glass ball insulator, and uh, the, uh, the final uh, uh, tuning network on it. Uh, the engineers there over the years have made it themselves, you know, rolled uh, copper tube in to come up with a tuned circuit. And, uh, they, of course, I've seen the old tubes they had, the old water cooled tubes. Had to, well, they were running, I can't remember the number, they were running two of those when they first started. But now they've got all this, uh, I forget who makes the, the uh, transmitter they have, but it's got all these racks of modules that one dies, the other one kicks in, and, you know, there's a multitude of them. Yeah, Roger. There are one kW modules, and uh, they just uh, slip them in and out uh, as needed. Uh, as one defuncts, they slam another one in there, and away they go. And you're right about uh, the water-cooled uh, uh, 50Ks. They were all the ways around a lake, uh, and they would use the uh, water from the lake to uh, cool the uh, tubing. Uh, they would not use that water inside the tubing for uh, the closed loop. They would always use distilled water for the closed loop, but they would use the uh, pond water to cool the, uh, the, the uh, distilled water pipes down. Roger? Roger. I remember seeing uh, uh, information on the Voice America. They had a pretty elaborate uh, cooling uh, 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 reservoirs for keeping our, all their transmitters cooled down. Roger. Now, those guys ran some big power. They were 150 uh, kW and 100 kWs like like that, you know. Uh, you know, Cincinnati uh, ran, uh, I think, uh, five, 500 uh, kW there for uh, testing for a little while. So, uh, I tell you, you were on air uh, uh, talent in at, uh, at the radio business. Yes, sir. Uh, I was uh, production director. Last uh, position was produ production director for WHAS Radio in Louisville, 50 KW. Okay, we've got several folks in our Aries group that uh, one guy used to do. The, it was the 
Oh, he was the head meteorologist for uh, our Channel 5. I forget uh, my brain's gone down which affiliate it was, but he's, he was a ham his whole life, and he was a station engineer and started out in radio and worked on the transmitters and all that good thing. So he and I have a good time uh, discussing the technical side of ham radio. My uh, brother-in-law was the uh, produced a show and, and did on-air stuff with a guy named Michael Jackson in... Uh, uh, oh, gosh, what was the station? Well, they, a couple of the different the L.A. stations, but this was the Michael Jackson who did the... It was a political commentary, but he's originally from uh, South Africa and not the Michael Jackson that we all think of. Roger that, roger that. Well, listen, I really en- enjoyed it there, uh, and uh, thanks for dropping by, uh, Doug. Uh, you're uh, sounding good. Uh, that uh, SW, the, the swan has uh, gone in and out a couple of times, but uh, by and large, uh, it's been on frequency, Roger. Well, I'm, I'm trying hard to keep it there, but uh, you, you never know. I, I remember, vaguely remember, I never had a swan way back when, but they were always what uh, known for their, their drifting, but... Uh, you know, you keep fighting it, but I thoroughly have enjoyed it. I've had it up for about three days now, and it's always exciting when I get one of these old radios back up and working and make some contacts, and everything's, you know, working pretty good. So thank you for coming back to me, and I really enjoyed the QSO and love talking about the, the you know, the, the history of, uh, of radio, the things in the past and so forth. But anyway, Jim, thank you, and I hope you have a great evening. KC9VKV, this is W4DML73. Roger, roger, Doug. And uh, if you get a chance, uh, we have been recording since 5, so if you want to hear that uh, swan in action, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, along with today's date, 10 we'll take you uh, to this recording. So let's uh, go to YouTube, do a call letter search, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, along with today's date, 10 we'll take you uh, to this recording. Roger. Okay, that means I get to hear my nasally southern sound. <laughs> That's 73, Doug. You have a great afternoon. And a beautiful weekend. This is uh, KC9VKV, and uh, gosh, I see by the clock a dead plot. Now, it's an old joke. It's uh, 11 past 5, so we've got to return this frequency back to normal amateur radio use. This is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. Enjoyed it all. If uh, you participated, wanted to hear your uh, audio, if you go to YouTube, do the call at a search, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, along with today's date, 10 21 will take you uh, to this recording. Now, if you just do a regular call and a search for our KC9 VKV, that will take you to our QSO VLOG page, where we're currently running 1,850 recorded uh, QSO VLOGs. Uh, so, something for everybody to peruse. Uh, you can listen to a lot of different audios there. Say, here, yeah, I like his. Uh, I don't like his. I like mine. Or oh, whatever. It's all about options. Uh, we'll catch you later. This is uh, Kilo Charlie 9. Victor Kilo Victor will be clear. KC9, Victor, Kilo Victor, and W4DML. This is 54 Bravo Alpha X-Ray. Quick comment? Uh, go ahead, sir. Hey, Doug and Jim. I hope you can hear me, Doug. Jim, does, uh, related to Elvis, does the name Lamar Fike mean anything to you? Uh, repeat the name. Lamar Fike. Lamar uh, Fike. F-I-K-E. Last name. Uh, no, I- I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. I just wondered. He is, uh, was an original member of the Memphis Mafia, and uh, we knew him uh, pretty well when he lived here in Nashville. Anyway, that was all. Just wanted to uh, see if you knew him. And Doug, if you're there, good afternoon to you. So I'll say 59 BKB, W4 DML, W4 BAX here, and I'm clear. Roger, Roger. Yeah, the last time I was uh, lived in Nashville, I was 16, uh, living in a boarding house going to electronics school at Mid-South Electronics and my my instructor got me a, a, a job at uh, WENO radio at 16 I was a board op and uh, he w- his name was a country cuz Thurston Springer 
and uh, he was uh, air personality at uh, Wino Radio, and uh, uh, they did a lot of remotes on the weekend. Uh, Wino was um, uh, one of the leaders in remote FM broadcast uh, links, uh, where later uh, Marty uh, started building uh, FM link equipment. They, uh, with the beginning of that, uh, they had two Volkswagens uh, with uh, uh, dipole, and uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Yagi antennas, and uh, they had a rotary Yagi antenna on their their uh, base station at the radio station, and uh, th- that's where uh, they could take five watts or ten watts uh, over uh, fifteen or twenty miles distance and uh, get a class A signal because uh, th- one transmitter would come up and the other station would orient their receive antenna and look at a view uh, S meter or max smoke. Uh, tuned uh, that in Yagi antenna for down the throat of the other one, and then the uh, the one which uh, come off uh, receive and go to transmit, and the remote uh, uh, guy would uh, swing his Yagi for max smoke. And when you had those two Yagis uh, down each other's throats, man, it really got quiet, and that's how they got uh, a good uh, links uh, at uh, 20 miles with uh, very very little wattage. Anyway, enough of that. We got to get out of here. 73, everyone. Catch you later. This is KC9 VK. Be clear.